how did the children I once cradled grow up so very quickly? Just as soaps seemingly never end, neither do the use of these cliches. I just got out of the shower. Keep your pants on. Or don't. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 soap opera cliches. I looked up to you. I wanted to be like you, a man of integrity. There you go. Throwing around words like integrity, like it meant something to you. Right, it did to you. For this list, we're taking a look at tropes and storylines that keep popping up in both daytime dramas and primetime soaps. I've got to go. Yeah, you already yeah. said that. Well, yeah, but I mean at this time, so. <laughs> Number 10, love triangles. You all right? Yeah, I just, um, hot and uh, claustrophobic. Assuming you're a regular soap watcher, chances are you've shipped more than a few couples together. Bobby got you. I'll be damned if I let JR get going. If your one true pairing finally comes to be, keep in mind that the honeymoon probably won't last long. Another guy or gal is eventually bound to enter the mix, instigating a love triangle. And you know it down deep inside, you just won't admit it. You're never gonna be happy with her because Brenda only wants to be with one man and it's Sunny. She wants to be with Sunny. Not this time. Of course, love triangles aren't always limited to just three people. Four, five, or even more people can be linked by a mutual attraction. Just look at the cast of Nashville. Raina, I'm done talking. No matter how many lovers are involved, somebody ultimately has to make a difficult decision. And at least one heart has to be broken. I want a divorce. Number nine, alternate personalities. She answered the question, jackass. My name is Gina. And you need to back the hell off. In reality, dissociative identity disorder is a rare condition, affecting approximately 1% of the population. In soap opera world, however, it's an everyday occurrence. You stupid, ugly bitch! Victoria Lord from One Life to Live in particular has shared her body with six alters over the years. I created you when I needed help, and I got your back more times than I could possibly count. This trope gives a performer a chance to shake things up and demonstrate their acting range. Sometimes, an alternate personality is a party animal. Other times, it's a childhood manifestation. And on occasion, they're total hellraisers. This is my solemn vow. So what you think? <laughs> Eddie. In any case, drama, confusion, and mischief are guaranteed when a split personality gets behind the wheel. Well, I hate to break it to you, kid. But I'm the real person, and you, Kate Howard, you're the old. Number eight, blackmail. You made him take the fall for murder. I had to. Blackmail is practically a hobby for the more calculating characters on soap operas. They get a kick out of digging up the dirt on someone else, whether it's an affair, a pregnancy, or some other kind of juicy bombshell. Nobody is gonna listen to what you have to say. Mm. I think they will when I tell them that Commissioner Carver forced a bright young detective with an exemplary record out of the department for sleeping with his wife. Rather than exposing the secret immediately, the blackmailer will use this information to get what they want out of the other person. Well, go ahead, Trina. You tell her. Yeah, wait here if you like. She'll be back in a minute. Yeah, you tell her. And I'll tell her how you came back right in when she gone. Yeah, and that sweet little act of yours that you worked up and suddenly disappeared. They'll keep their mouth shut in exchange for money, power, sex, or a favor. Since those who commit blackmail aren't exactly the honorable types, however, they'll just keep coming back for more. Mm -hmm. And by supporting his relationship with Hope and then Brooke, never needs to hear about our little sex committee. Well, if that's not blackmail, what do you call it? A nudge in the right direction. Number seven, long lost children. Maybe we can help each other think about something else. Seeing how so many soap opera characters have sex out of wedlock, it shouldn't come as a surprise when long-lost offspring show up on their doorstep years later. You have no idea. That's never even crossed your mind, not even for a second, has it? What has it? That I'm also your daughter. The bastard child usually comes to town to confront the mother who gave them up for adoption, the father who never knew they existed, or the sibling who got everything. My mother, I found out a year ago, my mother was your mother, Ellis Gray. Long-lost children rarely reveal their true identities up front, as they're usually out for revenge. After getting to know their estranged family members, though, the bond of blood may start to overshadow their resentment. Granddaughter, is he? Who's your dad? Number six, sibling rivalry. 
Sarah the good, Sarah the pure, Sarah the lying slut who swore to my face she would never go after Lucky. Do you remember that? Whether they grew up with each other or met later in life, soap opera siblings tend to butt heads every now and then. It's because you're selfish, Jack. Always have been, always yeah. will be. And what you're doing in here, that ain't selfish, is it? No, I ain't. The animosity between brothers and sisters typically stems from jealousy. Maybe one is envious that mommy and daddy love the other more. Get off of him! Get off of him! He's your brother! He's your brother! Perhaps it's a common love interest that is driving the two siblings apart, potentially leading to a good old fashioned cat fight. You're gonna be to them exactly what you are to me. Nothing. Hell, one of the siblings may simply be flat out evil, on a conquest to destroy the good seed. Whatever the reason, you can count on seeing plenty of slaps, punches, and bad blood. Ah, to think I remind you of your brother. You see a priest. To the contrary, he's burning in hell. Number five, multiple marriages. <gasps> oh, God. Hold it right there, Padre. Even if the wedding goes off without a hitch, that doesn't mean the bride and groom will live happily ever after. Sharon, I know you can rest assured you got a good man there. He's gonna stand by you for life. It's only a matter of time until something separates them, be it an affair, a secret, or an unforeseeable tragedy. Fortunately, long-running soap characters have little trouble finding another spouse. Hi, Erica. Take you, Travis, to be my wedded husband. Erica Keane from All My Children has been married a total of 10 times. But I'm getting married to Tom today and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, yes, there is. That's not even including her invalid marriages. One can't help but wonder if some of these people are really searching for true love, or if they just like getting dressed up, throwing extravagant parties, and walking down the aisle. I pronounce that they are husband and wife. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Number four, affairs. You want to do it on the table this time? Absolutely. As previously discussed in some of the earlier entries on this list, you can't have a soap opera without a few affairs. After a while, watching a committed couple lie around in bed together starts to get pretty boring. Uh, well, is it okay if I just lie here? Absolutely. So to make matters more interesting, one person will start sharing their bed with someone else. Characters have affairs for multiple reasons. They might grow tired of their significant other, or somebody better may come along. Something between us, you know there is. Don't give me that. You just used me for sex when she wasn't giving you any. And now that she is, you just want me for babysitting instead. No matter what, they're destined to get caught cheating somewhere down the line. Drama. Are we to believe this man is capable of guiding our nation with prudence and common sense with that seductress, Olivia Pope, distracting him? Number three, character in coma. Your brain works, okay? So all you need to do is form a word. Please. At some point, every soap opera character becomes temporarily comatose. Sometimes a coma ensues from a random accident. Other times, it's caused by an assassination attempt, amounting to a murder mystery. It was you, Kristen, who shot JR. After falling into the coma, the doctors won't be especially optimistic about their patient's odds of waking up. Keep fighting, Blair. I'm not ready to say goodbye. Don't be so hasty to pull the plug, though, because some sort of inexplicable medical miracle will come along and snap them out of it. Oh, well, they're killing off one of the characters on the show, and when she dies, her brain is being transplanted into my body. However, they'll more than likely suffer from a few side effects, such as amnesia. Be there when Michael wakes up. What happened to me? Number two, secrets revealed. Well, I think that I should tell you as a friend that there never was a Jessica, that your fiancé has never been married. Many soap opera characters harbor a deep, dark secret, yet they're always horrible at keeping that secret under wraps. What does this mean? I don't know, but check out the postmark. Oh my god, she got it the day she died. Most of the time, they'll foolishly talk about it in the open, ceasing to make sure nobody else is eavesdropping. Mr. Buchanan told me to change the paternity of the baby of one of his daughters. Once the secret is revealed to the wrong person, gossip will spread like wildfire. Over time, you'd think that these people would learn that honesty is the best policy, and the truth will inevitably come out anyway. Alas, there's always a new secret waiting to be exposed. When I was 13 years old, him and his mates locked me in a coffin. 
buried me alive. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm so happy that you two finally met. Well, what do you think of your good-looking brother? Brother? What? Didn't you know that Fallon was your sister? Wow. That was fantastic. Amazing. You were incredible. So are you. Oh, and... Oh. Time to go. What are you doing here? Well, I called Henry at the office, but the receptionist said he'd be here. Yeah, uh, I'm just making him dinner. Oh, really? Well, I have something in the oven, too. I'm pregnant. You're not wanted here. Not by you, maybe. It's not your choice, though, is it? <laughs> no, Marlon! Please, not just stop it! <laughs> Number one, Back from the Dead. Gee, is it always this good? Oh, I don't know. I just step in and out. I'm only watching today because Brandy is coming out of her coma and she knows the phony prince's body is hidden in the boathouse. The people on soap operas have more lives than a cat. Most of the time, a character will never even be dead to begin with. They were just missing in action or died in a dream. Good morning. Even if somebody's cold body is buried in the ground, you can never be certain of their ultimate demise. It doesn't matter if they fell off a building, drowned at sea, or got blown up in a plane crash. I'm bad. <laughs> There's always an absurd way to bring them back from the dead in the realm of soaps, especially when they're a fan favorite. My mother. What's your favorite soap opera cliche? All families have their secrets, Vicky. Ours just happens to be a particularly dirty one. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Father McGrath, I thought you were dead. I was.